Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to the Golf Ball Attic episode two. Um, I was wanting to do these a little more frequently than once a week, but uh, here we are. You know, I've actually been focusing on the ball reviews and boy, we have been cranking those out. Um, it's, it's been really good progress. Uh, the channel's been blowing up. I really appreciate everyone who's been watching. Um, it's, I've been getting a ton of views and uh, the channel's really growing, lots of new subscribers. So if you are one of them, thank you. If you're a longtime subscriber, you know I love you. Um, but it, it's been going really, really well. Uh, let's dive into the second episode here. Uh, let's first talk about some of the stuff I've been doing that's upcoming. So first of all, you might have noticed the last week or so uh, that I have been posting quite a few ball reviews. And uh, it's been like one every two days. And I can let you know that that is going to continue to happen. Uh, Basically, you know, I had some time off from work and I was able just to go out there and test three golf balls a day. And I, I kind of just treated it like my job for a while, just, you know, because we were having a little bit of trouble finding some work during the holidays. People don't need a painter as much, who knew? Uh, but I basically worked at like an eight hour shift. So I was able to go out and get three golf balls tested and filmed in the same day. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm backlogged like 10 to 12 golf balls right now that I already have filmed. They just need to be edited. Uh, so all through December and probably January, you're going to be getting a video probably, if not every two days, every day maybe even. Uh, stuff like this. I have some filler videos, things like that. Uh, so there's going to be some constant video. So if you really like the channel, I appreciate it. Just give them a watch. Um, I'll, I'll take any feedback. If there's some stuff that I do post, you know, a lot of this is going to be experimentation. So if it's something you don't like or you don't think hits very well, it's not going to hurt my feelings. Just be like, hey, Nick, I don't think this hit very well. You know, the view counts down. I didn't really enjoy it. Um, you know, we're, we're going to learn and grow together so we can continue to grow this channel. Uh, but let's dive into, first of all, the, uh, the comments. Some of those comments you guys have given me over the last few weeks uh, that I think are either of note. Um, now, first of all, there's a lot of long-time people who have been commenting regularly, and I really do appreciate that because the more you comment, the more you like, the more you share, the more it grows my channel, the more it, it makes YouTube kind of pay attention to what we're doing, so maybe YouTube will kind of throw my stuff out there to other people, maybe new audience members or new clients. All right, so getting into the first one here, this was actually on uh, my old driver versus new driver video. So that was the one where I took the 15-year-old Callaway against my new Mizuno. Um, got some interesting results there. Uh, it says, if that shaft was right for you, you probably would have gotten better results. And that's absolutely true. It wasn't even close to being fitted for me. It was way too flexible. It was a regular shaft, but honestly, it was on the venture line of being. It was one of those light ones they came out with, which is supposed to be like swing it really fast, kind of a beginner one. Um, getting fitted is very important. And if there's any reason I would tell you to get fitted. It's not really to choose what type of club you need. You probably know that. You know what you like the look of, and you've probably done your research on reviews. But more than anything, you need to know what kind of shaft you need. That's what really getting fitted is about. Um, and when I got fitted for Mizuno, you'll remember, I really didn't like the experience that much, and it ended up being a, a catastrophe. If you don't know about that, watch those videos, because it, it was. It was delayed three, four months. It was awful. Um, but the one thing they got right was the shafts. I was able to get those golf clubs in and just pick them up, hit them, and it was like I never, I never, it was like I didn't even have to learn how to use them. It was just, it just felt right. So that's one aspect. I definitely agree with that. This one's another one. This says, uh, watch Rick Shields' review on this ball. He cuts up and explains the different layers of the tech inside the ball. I game this ball and absolutely love it. Soft with the putter, crisp with the pitching wedge, and Oh, Chris with pitch and I think great off the driver face. Uh, so that was about the Wilson triad, which I had very bad results with. Now, you'll see a lot, you know, Wilson, it's, it's going to be common for you to look at other channels like Rick Shields and um, TXG and, uh, you know, just the, the big boys, the ones who have a lot of subscribers. And you're going to see golf balls that I don't necessarily recommend, uh, but ones that they do or, you know, like the Wilson Triad's a great example just because um, they're, they're swinging fast. They're professionals. You know, those guys, Rick Shields, I think, has like 112, 115 mile an hour swing speed. Of course, he probably gets a better result out of the Triad than I do. He swings the golf club 20 miles an hour faster than I do. Golf balls are all about compression. That's why we test these numbers. And my channel's based off of a moderate swing speed, about 92, 93. Um, you know, and I try to cater it to the slower as well because I can kind of tell. But I can also tell you if a golf ball is going to be better faster. And the triad's definitely meant for faster. So, um, you know, I'll let you get away with the Rick Shields there. He is my direct competition. So, you know, keep his name out of my channel. Um, no, I'm just kidding. I, I, Rick Shields is actually probably one of the in, one of the main inspirations. Um, actually, that's a good story. I'll go ahead and tell that. We're on a podcast anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so one of the main reasons I did this uh, channel was because 
I was listening to the Rick Shields podcast, and I was a I was a listener from the first episode. So I mean, he came out with episode one, two, three, and it was like one of the first few episodes. I want to say it was like five, six. It was somewhere in there. It was one of the first ones. And uh, someone had emailed Rick and asked him, "Do you, you know rate how important this stuff is? You know, from most important to least important." And like one of them was getting fitted for clubs, one of them was practicing every day, one of them was going to the course and playing every day, and then like. There was a, anyway, there was a bunch of stuff like that, and then it got to golf ball fitting. And the first thing Rick said was, well, golf ball fitting's at the bottom. That doesn't really matter. I mean, whatever. Most, I mean, most golf balls are the same. Um, now, what he meant by that was when you swing 115 mile an hour and you're really, really good like Rick Shields, yes, most golf balls are the same. You can hit a Callaway X or a TP5 or you know a Pro V1 or a Strixon Z Star, Z Star, whatever, um, and you're going to get pretty much similar results because you're getting the most out of your golf club and you're getting the most out of your golf ball. Um, but that's not the case for 99% of the golfers. And when I heard it, I was actually working at an auto shop, uh, a parts warehouse at the time, and it, like, it made me cringe. I made me drop what part I had, and I thought, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me, because I think it's one of the most underrated aspects of golf and getting fitted, is a lot of people just look at it and go, ah, you know, and it's easy for those people, because most of the time if someone's telling you that, it's someone who's really, really, really good. And, you know, 99% of golfers are guys who are the weekend warriors. They're just going out, have a good time. They want a golf ball that's going to really perform for them well, forgive them. Um, and you just don't talk, you just don't hear that type of talk from any of these guys who have these high-end YouTube channels who swing really fast. And so I was like, that's when I knew. I was like, I, I got to do this channel. I said that it's needed, you know, because you go, at the time, this was 2020, I would go in and type in, you know, um, you know, Wilson Zip golf ball review and just nothing came up. You know, nobody was reviewing two-piece golf balls, and I was like, okay, this is my chance. You know, people need these reviews. I would want these reviews. This is an opportunity. I can do what I love, and that's why this channel started. So I have to give Rick Schultz credit. He's one of the inspirations there. Um, one day I hope to talk to him about it. I hope one day to talk to him about it. Um, I'd love to be on his podcast one day. Uh, my dream is to get there, and I'm going to tell him that story. I'm going to tell him how he said that and how it sparked my channel and see what kind of reaction I get. Who knows? Now it's been two years, and hell, by the time I get there, it might be 10 years. So he probably will have changed his opinion by then, but who knows? Who knows? All right, so um, next up we have, is it cold out two gloves? So this is funny. So if you see me wearing two gloves in a video where I'm out there hitting into the net, there's a reason I wear two golf gloves. Um, the reason I wear two golf gloves is because when you're hitting like, when you're testing three golf balls and you're hitting like 150, 200 shots a day, both your hands will get pretty blistery. I mean, it gets really, and I, I have golf grips on my Mizunos right now that I don't like. They came with the clubs. I didn't get to really choose them and they're pretty sandpapery. I mean, they have great grip, which I know that's kind of like that hyper thread that Golf Pride has. You know, it's one of the, the you know, features of it. You know, oh yeah, it's, it's got a good grip, it's sticky, it's like sandpaper, but man, it'll mess up your hand. And so I always just wear two gloves, just that way I don't mess my hands up, because then when I get to Saturday, I gotta be pristine. I gotta make sure that my hands are in perfect order, that way I can really post that 103 to the best of my ability. Um, okay, so a couple comments there. So, um, first topic of the day, so this one here, this was probably in the main headline, so this is going to be, of course, um, I want to talk about Tiger Woods for a second. I don't talk about many golf guys on my channel, um, haven't had the opportunity to yet, but um, if you're not aware, Tiger Woods was supposed to be teeing it up at the Hero World Challenge this weekend. Um, I don't know when I post this, it might not be this weekend, but he was supposed to do the Hero World Challenge. He's not. Um, he has plantar fasciitis um, on top of his, I don't know, 12 back surgeries and on top of everything else going on with him. Um, he did a press conference. He talked about it. Um, you know, more more live versus PGA Tour. You know, was in there. I'll spare you that. Um, but more than anything, it was about basically. He was saying his career was coming to an end. His playing days were coming to an end. You know, and he he pretty much um, he said this before, but he's just going to be doing the Masters maybe once a year or whatever. Maybe the major tournaments he's allowed to play in, and that's probably it. Uh, which, as far as I'm concerned, that means his career is pretty much over. Um, just because it's so difficult to win those tournaments. Um, I know he's made it look easy in the past, but you're talking about the greatest golfers all over the world coming together and competing for an event. Uh, it's not like the PGA Tour. Do I think Tiger could still win a couple PGA Tour events? Absolutely, especially right now. Especially right now with the competition. Everybody's left and gone to live, so I think he could be out there just lighting it up. I wouldn't be surprised to see him win in one out of every four events, to be honest with you, even in his condition right now. Um, but this is really sad. This is really sad because a generation, especially my generation, grew up with Tiger, and Tiger changed golf. He changed golf completely, 
and he's the greatest of all time. No disrespect to Nicholas, no disrespect to any of the other guys. Um, I get it, but the way Tiger changed golf was incredible. Uh, you had a sport that was, let's be honest, let's be transparent for a second, it was dominated by old white men that most of them were out of shape. John Daly, looking at you. I love John Daly, but let's be honest, that's, that's how most golfers looked. Um, I, I'm sure most of you have even seen the meme where it says then versus now, you know, and it has, I think it's uh, Arnold Palmer and Jack Nicholas, and they're eating, uh, or they're smoking cigarettes, you know, on the tee waiting. And then now it shows McElroy and he's eating a banana. And like that, that's the tiger effect. Tiger came in and he worked out. He was shredded. He had a charismatic smile. Um, he could do anything to a golf ball. He does things to golf balls on the course during the most pressing moments that stuff me and you could go to the, the range and try a hundred times and not even come close to imitating it. He completely changed everything. Everybody's paychecks increased. Um, viewership went through the roof. It was kind of like the Happy Gilmore effect. You know, if you've ever seen Happy, of course you've seen Happy Gilmore. Who hasn't? Especially if you're a golf fan. Remember when Happy Gilmore, it may be fictional, but Happy comes in there, it's brand new. All of a sudden they have all these new types of golf fans that had never been there before. Now you had that with Tiger. You had a more youthful crowd who loved Tiger, you know, who he was marketable and he was a rock star at 16 and 15. He was signed before he even got there. And it's disappointing now to see how this has unfolded because he is the prime example of, you know, a stereotypical, if you've ever seen, you know, a, a musical memoir movie um, or, you know, the, the, the rise and fall tale. But it's like a rock star. It's the rise and fall of a rock star. And it, it's almost generic in every sense of that word. Um, Michael Jackson went through it, uh, you know. Tiger Woods now has went through it. You know, other guys, you know, Kanye went through it. Uh, you know, he's, he's now a mess. Um, it's, it's the rise and fall tale of a rock star. And that's what Tiger's life is. Um, the best there ever was. Had more talent than he knew what to do with, and it was never enough. And that's why, you know, things like, you know, the drugs got involved and the sex, the partying, uh, you know, the affairs were terrible. Um, and then, you know, the prolonged drug use after that for his back surgeries, his back started to go, um, you know, and then had a chance to come back, play, you know, won the Masters in 19, but that rock star life still kind of loomed in on him a little bit. And, you know, he was driving way too fast, way faster than he should have been, way faster than the speed limit. And he's, he's very lucky he didn't lose his leg. It always caught up to him. It was just the life he had. And it sucks. It really does suck because now, as I've mentioned before, golf's in a terrible place. Professional golf is in a terrible place. Golf that I, me and you play is in a great place. It's, it's booming, you know, there's all kinds of new clubs. It's getting, I mean, it's amazing, but professional golf watching on TV is a mess. Liv's a mess, the PGA Tour is a mess. I look at the leaderboard every week. I have no idea who's on the PGA Tour. I have no idea who these guys are. Which brings me to my next point. If I am the PGA Tour, immediately I'm thinking, I've got to find the next Tiger Woods, which, let's be honest, there's no next Tiger Woods. Um, so I, I would say, you know, you need to find the next big number one golfer, and you need to make sure he's loyal to the PGA. And by loyal, I mean ka-ching, ka-ching, you need to offer up some money. But obviously that's a very hard thing to do. Who are you going to find? Well, I mean, to find someone like Tiger, you would almost have to have someone who has the DNA of Tiger. Someone who, from the time they were little, has been trained like Tiger, has been taught the ways of Tiger. Oh wait, we have someone like that, Charlie Woods. If I'm the PGA Tour, there is no way I let Charlie Woods go anywhere else than the PGA Tour, period. Save me the nonsense of the PGA Tour is nonprofit and they don't have the money to, you know, they don't have the Saudi Arabia money. They got money, of course they do. You know how much money they've made in the last 20 years off Tiger? Come on. They're loaded. So if I'm the PGA Tour and I want to save it, you've got to get Charlie Woods. And you've got to make sure he stays loyal. So what do you do? I'd throw money at him right now. I know, he's 13, 14. I wouldn't care. I'd throw a pretty hefty sum at him. Like right now, I, I, wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be phased at all right now seeing how Charlie's playing. Charlie's putting up five under in tournaments right now at 13 years old. He's going to be successful in the PGA Tour. Of course he is. He's being trained by Tiger. Let's be honest. I'm not saying he's going to be Tiger. I'm not saying he's going to uh, win as many awards as Tiger. I'm not saying any of that. I'm just saying that 
he's at least going to be good. He's going to win events. He's going to win majors. He's going to do really well. Of course he is. But more than anything, he draws viewership attention. People love Tiger Woods. Tiger Woods just won $15 million for being the most popular player. And he played, what, two events this year? They're going to watch because of Charlie. I'm going to watch because of Charlie. You're going to watch because of Charlie. They know it's going to be, it's going to put butts in seats. People are going to go and it's going to draw people in. So you know what, if I'm the PGA Tour, I offer Charlie Woods right now, I just say, listen, I'll give you a $300 million signing bonus. Come to the PGA Tour. You know, I don't know how long that would be. Maybe it's 20 years. Maybe it's 30 years. I don't know. Heck, if he gets to 16, 17 and he's still not signed, I'd throw a billion dollars at him. Is that a lot of money? Yeah, it is. But you think he's not going to make that back in 20, 30 years playing on tour? And we don't know. Maybe, maybe Charlie Woods wants to play on tour like his dad anyway. Who knows? He might. He might have that loyalty just like Tiger does. But if I'm PGA Tour, I don't take a chance. For 20, 30 years, if I can have Charlie play on the PGA Tour exclusively, he's going to still make the money he wins from the events and stuff, but it's just a signing bonus to say, hey, you're going to play for us exclusively. Now all of a sudden, the PGA Tour is relevant again. People are watching every single week to see how Charlie does. It's right back into the old swing of things. People love nostalgia. They'll feel, even though it's not Tiger, it's like Tiger. It's his son. It's his offspring. They'll be, I'll be there the first... I won't be there. I'll be, I'll be watching on TV the first time he wins his first major. And I'll be excited about it. And I'll be like, hey, Tiger's back. You know, Woods is back. It's just the smaller Woods. <laughs> but I don't let him walk. Because if Liv gets him... If Liv gets Charlie Woods, it's over. The PJ's tour's done. Period. So you don't let him walk. You throw out any amount of money you need to. Just my two cents. Um, but ultimately, I love Tiger. I always have. I think most people do. But I was very surprised when I watched a Tiger press conference today. And I was checking the comments. And a lot of people were a little snippy. Some people have started to turn on Tiger. Whereas five years ago, I, you couldn't find a single person that didn't like Tiger. And now people are starting to turn. Look at the comment section. It's crazy how fast people can rise, and it's also fa it's amazing how fast they can fall. All right, I do want to touch on this real quick. So this is something I've, I've thought about for a while, and I do have people ask me this all the time on the course, is what should I practice the most? Um, you know, what, what should I practice the most as far as my golf game? And I, ha I hate this question because it's a loaded question, and it's, it's dependent on who you are as a golfer. Um, you know, if you want a, a generic answer, I can give you a generic answer, but more importantly, it also, I mean, the reason it depends on you is simply because I don't know your golf game. If you're someone who has amazing iron striking capabilities and your putting's great, your chipping's great, but you can't get off the tee box to save your life, well, then yeah, you need to practice your driver. That's easy. Um, but if you're someone new coming into the game and you're just like, hey, uh, what should I spend the most time on? Like, what should I really spend the most time doing, um, starting off with? I'm going to tell you right now, it's your short game. 100% it's your short game, period. It really is. Uh, and there's no debate about it. And I'll, I'll tell you why. Because um, there, there's a couple scenarios here. So let's say you're the, the golfer that goes out with their friends every week. You all play your own ball. And, you know, you're, you're, you're uh, uh, betting money or whatever per hole. Um, even if your driver is terrible and you just can't seem to hit it that well, you can take a three wood and hit it off and still get you know, 90%, 85% of what you would with your driver. And you'd at least get it, you know, somewhere. It might be in the rough. It's in play, though. You're not going to take a penalty stroke. Penalty strokes kill you. I mean, I'll just tell you that right now. Ask my buddy Alex. Uh, penalty strokes kill his game. He'd be breaking 80 right now if it wasn't for penalty strokes. So you can get off the tee there. Next up with the iron shot, does it help to be able to throw darts? Yes. But do you know how difficult it is to train yourself to be able to throw darts on a consistent level? To be able to get the ball within 10, 15 feet of the pin every single time? It's very difficult, even for professional golfers. Look at pro golfers. Even they don't do it all the time. So even if you're 150 yards out, 170, whatever, and you can hit the ball and at least get decent contact enough to get it up around the green, you're okay. But now think about it. You're two shots in. You're at least somewhat near the green. Let's say, let's say you're even are 50 yards or less out, okay? You've hit two terrible shots. Let's say you sliced your drive over into the rough and you were 170 and then you took a hybrid and you hit it and it wasn't hit very well and now you're 50 yards out. Now we're talking about short game, which means you can still up and down for a par or even up and two putt for a bogey and bogeys still aren't bad. When you're starting off golf, breaking 90, I mean, basically the way I always tell people to look at 90 is you're allowed, your, your bogeys become your pars. 
So you can have a bogey per hole and you shoot a 90. So you need one hole to be a par, but other than that, you can have a bogey per hole. So realistically, now, if you can get really good with your wedges, really good with them, chipping, pitching, all around the green, and then get really good at putting to where you can sink a couple of long puts around and get a par, maybe a birdie, um, you know, maybe save a bogey, that's going to shave strokes off your game. Uh, I've played in a couple tournaments over the last couple weeks. They were scramble tournaments, and in both tournaments, our groups were excellent off the, dri off the tee box with the drivers. We all hit great approach shots with the irons. We got on the green, and we two-putted every dang time. And unfortunately, in a golf tournament, as you know if you've ever played in one, especially a scramble, two-putting doesn't get it done. I think we finished... Eight under and one, which is not normally what we would do. We would usually shoot for about 12, uh, 13 won it. So we, I mean, we could have got 13. Our course record, I think, at that course was, I think, um, I think was 12. So, I mean, we could have probably beat it with a 13. And then we played in another tournament two weeks later, and we were seven under. And through the first nine holes, we were only two under. And again, not bad. I mean, not great off the tee, great with the iron shots, two putted every single time. There was even a couple times from, from six feet out. I think, I think three times from six feet out, four of us could not hit a putt, and it killed us. We're not normally that way. We're normally a little better than that, but sometimes it happens, and that's why it's the most important. You can hit the ball semi-okay off the driver and be okay. You can hit the ball semi-okay and get up near the green okay, but once you're around that green, everything's got to be tightened up. Your chips and pitches, you can't, you can't duff your, your, your chips. It'll kill you. You got to be able to get a nice consistent contact with it, get it close to the hole. That way you can just tap in. Or if you're on the green far away, you got to be able to read your speed right, get a two putt. It will save you a million strokes a year. You'd be surprised. You'll probably start breaking 90 or 80 or whatever you've been trying to do a lot quicker than you thought. Just my two cents. But I get that question a lot. And I really thought, I really have thought about it over the last couple weeks because uh, that tournament got me thinking a lot. Both tournaments got me thinking about it because I'm like, man, if you're going to focus on something, it needs to be that short game. And you know, uh, my mother's on my scramble team and uh, she's been at fault of this too sometimes where she'll get the driver out and be practicing, practicing, practicing and she'll be like, oh, if I could just drive it a little further, I could help you guys out. And I'm like, listen, short game, short game, short game. I don't need you off the driver, you know? I mean, my mom takes little half swings. If you've never seen her swing, she takes little half swings, uh, drives the ball about 150 yards, which is really good for half swings. I mean, honestly, it's really fantastic. And she has some of the best accuracy I've ever seen. Her fairway percentage has got to be 80% plus. It's amazing. But when our tee box is 30 yards back and we drive the ball 260, it's irrelevant. But around the greens, we need her. Around the greens, we need me. Around the greens, we need Alex. When you're playing with your friends betting money, and it comes down to the, the wire and both of you are on the green putting, you're going to want to sink that putt because your opponent probably won't. All right. Well, that's all the time we have for today. We didn't get to a lot of subjects like I would have liked to. Usually I like to do a, a third segment, a third block, but I kind of ran a little long with the Tiger one maybe. Um, but overall, still good. I appreciate all the comments and everything. If you want me to talk about something on the podcast, you're more than, like, you're more than welcome to send me a message or an email, whatever you need to do. Um, and I will gladly address it uh, any way I can. Um, but yeah, overall, good second episode. Uh, third one will be coming maybe in a couple weeks. I'm still trying to work on some, some top fives and stuff. I do have top five videos for you. Uh, that is something I'm very excited about. I have been um, essentially, I, I know a lot of you have told me over, over the last couple years, you're like, you need top fives, you need top fives. But I just haven't had enough videos, you know, or enough ball reviews yet. But I finally do. That's why I've been pushing these out. And plus, I've also done some fun other ones. I have one coming up about, you know, golf products I would own if I wasn't broke. Um, there's another one coming out that is like top five sexiest irons. So, I mean, obviously with me, I, I can't afford to go out and buy irons or test them and, and companies won't send them to me yet. I'm not quite known well enough. Um, so I can't test them, but I can judge them based on their looks, you know, and it's still a fun video we can do and have some fun with. Um, so those are coming as well. And I'll have quite a few of those. I think in December, I'm gonna have probably five or six top five videos. So really good stuff coming. If you've watched to the end, I appreciate it guys. As always, keep watching to keep saving and keep learning. And uh, we'll just continue on this great adventure.